the first thing I want to talk about, about shop organization. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe that's the final point. Okay, here's what. <laughs> a few days ago, I was working on my lathe and I have some tools to the left side of my lathe. There's a hammer, a big dead blow hammer, because I use that a lot for tapping stuff. And then there's a big uh, crescent wrench, adjustable crescent wrench, and that's for like working on the tool post and stuff like that. And I have some indicators up on top. But I built this tool stand to the left of my lathe about three years ago, three or four years ago. And my idea back then was, oh, this is where I'll keep this stuff and I can, <clears throat> and I always have a bit of mission creep when I make some new organizational part of a tool. There's always mission creep because I love maximizing uh, uh, functionality as everybody does. I mean, who doesn't love maximizing functionality, right? So I'm looking at this tool stand and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna make the crescent wrench holder like one of Tom Sachs's things and I'm gonna make a nice little cradle for the, and what I noticed as I started to use this thing over the last three years is that one, the hook I made for the hammer is too, is hard and it it's actually slows me down to get the hammer out and put it back in. So that needed fixing. Two, the holder, my Tom Sachs style holder for the crescent wrench was shite. And that also was like, I had to, basically it's, it, it was trying to speed, I was trying to speed me up. And in fact, I was slowing me down. In addition, I had tools on there, like, 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 um, uh, hang on. I had, I had tools on there, like my, uh, like the wrenches for my chucks and my spindle. And I need access to these all the time. There are three different ones that I use, four different keys I use all the time. I have seven trucks at this point. And I had them in these little hooks here. And it was like, just frankly, for my practice, if I've got this little tiny thing that, and I gotta like get it right or it doesn't quite go, that's not gonna flow with my shop flow. I want I want to be able to like dunk and pull it out and put it back and pull it out and put it back. So. I rebuilt this platform and in rebuilding it, I tried not to be romantic about how much functionality I wanted it to have. I tried to be practical. So it's only holding six tools, a hammer, a crescent wrench, and four of these, and that's it. It's less crowded than it was before, but boy, is it much easier to use. Okay, so that's one story. The second story is that I was finishing up a build yesterday, a, a big build for this shop. It's a huge uh, like steamer trunk that I've built for displaying something. It'll show up soon. You've seen it in the background in a few videos so far. Anyway, a, a build like this steamer trunk, which is like two, like, uh, yeah, it's like two feet by two feet by two feet. Oops, sorry, it's two feet by two feet by five and a half feet. Um, it tends to clog up the shop as I work on it. So when tools pile up here, tools pile up there. And then I go and get like a, a Sordomo case and I put it here uh, and I grab something out of it and I move over. So yesterday I was doing that kind of practice and Norm stopped by. And Norm and I were over here because whenever anyone from Tested comes here, um, I'm always like, come, 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 look at what I built. <laughs> look at what I built. So Norm is here and I'm like, excitedly showing him this thing that just came in the mail and we hear this crash. And it was my drywall screws, which as you can see, the Sortimo case for them is empty, but it wasn't just the drywall screws. No, no, no. Ugh. Ugh. It was also my electrical, <laughs> my lug connectors for my electrics. Oh, and <laughs> this, is, this is the third and fourth Sortimo case that have fallen. And I mean, oh my God, you should have seen it. We filmed a little bit of it, but like Norm and I both looked over and you can see both Sortimos were like fully upside down with their bellies just facing the ground. It's a total disaster. When something like that happens, one of my first thoughts frequently is, Jesus, maybe I should just spend my way out of this situation. I mean, how much time is it gonna take me to sort out a bucket full of drywall screws versus how much will it cost me to buy five boxes of a hundred of this and that? <clears throat> I'm not proud of that way of thinking, 
but you know, look, my time is an asset. That's something to be mindful of here. And yet, so I, I emailed a friend, I texted a friend who works in aerospace and I was like, okay, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. With the drywall screws, I came up with the sorting algorithm that's actually going gangbusters. And this bucket is half of what it was an hour, an hour ago. Yeah, so I don't think it'll take me much more than an hour to finish this, whatever that is, seven or eight pounds of drywall screws. And I wanna show you how I did the organization because it's actually really, I think it's in interesting. Um, We'll get to the lugs in a minute. So what I did was I took each size of drywall screw, and I won't do this for all of them, but I took each size and I taped it to the end of a sorting box. And then on a handy tray, I've got this medical uh, tray. Actually, I think I can raise it here. There we go. On this tray, I would sit here and be like, when you're looking at, sorry, when you're looking at a pile of parts like this, you tend to be able, I personally tend to be able to delineate like sometimes up to four different sizes, but one usually sticks out at me. Uh, and right now it's this, it's, these are the uh, two inch drywalls are really easy for me to spot as opposed to the one and three quarter inch. So I just go pick up all the two inch drywalls that I could find and I'd put them in the two inch drywall box and occasionally I had to check. Then I would go through and go for the tiniest ones, these little, the, uh, the three quarter inchers. They're not the tiniest. I know you can get even smaller, but they're hard to find. So then I grab all the tiny ones and I basically just keep on moving through this in passes, in passes, in passes. And while that sounds tedious and reader, it is, uh, it allowed a speed that I was actually pretty surprised by. So uh, as soon as I'm done with this live stream, I plan to finish sorting all the drywall screws. Um, which is nice, right? I, 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 the problem I have with, with drywall screws in particular is that my, for my practice, I really like these um, coarse threaded number eights, I think is what these are. Um, and frankly, the signal to noise ratio in the purchasing of screws online is, can be a little hairy. <laughs> Just, I, I find sometimes I order something I think is the right thing and it comes and it's like, it's not even close to the right thing. And right now I'm actually having trouble finding the super tiniest drywall screws, half inchers. Um, I found some, anyway. Moving on to the lugs. So, that's the drywall problem solved, but the lugs problem. Ugh. The lugs problem, I mean, it's the same level of complexity, but there's another question to answer here, which is, do I need all of these? How many times am I gonna run into, what is this, a three-eighths hole uh, 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 lug like this for, for thick gauge wire that I almost never work with in the shop? So I looked at this pile and I thought, I need better lugs. Like if I'm going to spend my way out of this problem, I should get better lugs. And so I texted a friend in aerospace and I was like, hey, tell me what the range is. Cause you can spend a buck a piece on these things if you want to go aircraft quality. Um, I have a really good, somewhere around here. I have a really good crimper, a crimper that I like, that's adjustable, it makes good crimps, it's solid. The issue that I have is, again, the signal to noise ratio of lugs. Um, I'm looking, like anybody is, for copper, for tinned copper insulated lugs with nylon collars or heat shrink collars. Uh, I don't want the PVC crappy ones, and I certainly don't want the ones that are Aluminum, I mean, you could actually go online, find some that say that they're copper, order them, and they're not copper. So here's my question to you, and I would love some advice on this. Uh, what is a good, hefty, 
thorough assortment of lugs that are copper. Okay, that's one question. The second question is, I think I'm going to eliminate most of the lugs that I have in this case, because I mostly use the uh, the red, yellow, and blue quick connects and, uh, and plugs and, um, what do you call them? Uh, uh, these guys. These guys, the uh, uh, joining two wires together. Those are the most of what I use. Everything else I could have just a small smattering of and it wouldn't really affect me. And now we get to the sort of central question, which is inherent in all of the questions you guys submitted. I'm gonna start answering them in a few seconds, which is, I hear a question in all of this that is like, how do I organize so I can be done organizing? And it's a great question. And the answer is, you can't. The thing about organization is, it is not a task, it's a process. Organization is a process and it's ongoing. So there's questions in here about like, oh, I'm worried about building something that I'm gonna expand later, I'm gonna change later. Happens here constantly, constantly. I rebuilt my ladder for all my pliers because I had to admit I wasn't using a whole swath of them. I literally, I think I took, what, like 30 pairs of pliers and wrenches and put them in a bucket over a tested for everyone to grab from. Um, for me, the process of organization here in the shop is just a constant process of watching myself, how I work, what I'm using, and trying not to be overly romantic about like, look, part of me wants to set up a case that has one of everything, everything. That's never really gonna happen. That's never, yeah. You're gonna get close, but you're never gonna be done organizing. It's just, it's just not possible. Um, and if you, if you embrace that, then I feel like organization is less of a losing game or what feels like a Sisyphean task of constantly doing the same thing over and over. Uh, and it becomes just a part of the normal practice of using your shop. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams, and we have some members-only videos, including the Adam real-time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.